This morning, my sermon title is called Seven Times Seventy. And you know where that's coming from. And that's about forgiveness. You know, uh, a few weeks back, you know, Amin just asked me, so what are you planning to share? What's, what's in your heart? And when I said forgiveness, he's like, okay, you want to start with forgiveness the new year? Um, you know, and I was like, okay, yeah, maybe that's, that's something that I didn't think about. But the fact of the matter is, many of us are not experiencing the fullness and the freedom of God because we're stuck with a few things. And most of it has to do with unforgiveness. So in order for us to step into this new season, this becomes very, very vital for us, for us to experience all what God has already prepared for us. And if you are stuck, it's time to get unstuck. Because if you want to experience all that God has for you, how many of you want to experience all that God has for you? How many of you know it in your heart that God has wonderful plans for you? Not ordinary, extraordinary plans. No eyes have seen, no ears have heard. Because he's, he's going to do a new thing in you. So this is going to be a new version of who you are going to be in 2024. Are you excited? Yes. Now in order for you to experience and encounter God in your life, you need to kind of let go of a few things. You need to understand there are certain relationships where you have been struggling with unforgiveness. And God wants to set you apart. He wants to consecrate because God wants to flow in your life. And in order for him to flow, he needs, to, he needs you to consecrate. And I'm telling you this, that God has amazing things for you this year. And if we don't consecrate, your, if we don't consecrate ourselves, we are the ones who are missing out all that God has on offer for us. So it is time for us to understand and grapple this truth. How many of you are with me this morning? You know how many lives are actually rotting because of unforgiveness? So many of them have lost momentum. So many of them are not progressing because there is a stale sense of bitterness which is holding them back. But God wants you to move forward. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm moving forward. 2024, I'm moving forward. You know, I'm going to be reading um, a lot today because I believe more than what I have to say, this word of God has power. I don't need to kind of like, you know, give my, you know, preview about it. I don't need to give my perception about it. It stands for what it is. So this morning, God wants to do something significant in your life. And this word, which is in the written form, is graphe. And from graphe, we want to see the word come alive, which is logos. The word becomes flesh and becomes a dwelling among us. So that we can see the glory, the glory of the one and only. How many of you want to experience that? How many of you want this word to come alive in you so that you become activated? You don't want to be a passive Christian. You want to be an active Christian. Right? So if you want to be activated, you need to trigger something on the inside of you. And that's going to be the word of God. And when you activate it, it will come alive in you. And once it come alive in you, don't keep it to yourself. You need to release it. The spoken word, which is called as rhema word. So I, I encourage you this morning, whatever I'm going to say to you, I don't want to say anything out of my, my own perceptions or my own wisdom. I want to say what I want to say is what the word is going to uplift you and what the word of God is going to penetrate deep into your hearts. Today, I don't want to speak. I want to let the Holy Spirit speak to you. None of my words is going to make anything change, but it's only the word of God which comes in truth and power that is going to change everything about us, everything about our circumstance, everything about our being is going to be transformed. And I believe, are you with me today? Are you believing with me today? That you want to see in this new year. Because every new year gives us an opportunity to start afresh. How many of you have had uh, new year goals? You know, I want to lose weight. I want to, you know, you know, I want to shift. I want to get a new house. I want to get a new car. Whatever it is. All those things are fine. You know, we, we have those, you know, what do you say? Ambitions. 
resolutions. Oh, sometimes I wonder what those resolutions are. You know, because we're trying to catch up every year, year after year. But here's what I want us to be encouraged with. The resolution that you make today to walk in freedom in 2024 is going to align you to set you apart so that you can experience everything, not in short form, but in full form, all that God wants to do in and through your life. You know, because there is an expectation on you. God has an expectation set on you. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, there is an expectation that is set upon me. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say that. There is an expectation which is set upon me. Because there are people out there, they need to hear and they need to know because there is an expectation which is on you, which is going to be activated and come alive when we receive what God has to say. So today, the rhema word, I pray that you will get it in your heart so that it gets deposited richly in you so that you can see the power of God working in and through you and be released through you. Amen? How many of you are with, with me this morning and how many of you are excited? You know, when we talk about forgiveness, it's not something new, right? We've heard sermons after sermons about forgiveness. But incidentally, that's one of the areas that we struggle the most. There are so many people struggle with unforgiveness. Right? And that's what is kind of like holding us back from moving forward. You know, from the passage uh, of scripture that we can get to understand um, a lot more where the kingdom of God is very clearly emphasized here. And this is from, uh, let's turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 18. So I'm going to read from Matthew chapter 18. Verses 20, 21 onwards to 35. So this is a long passage. I want you to, I mean, I want you to pay attention. Like I said this morning, this is going to be the spoken word, which is going to come alive. And I want you to, I want you to pay attention very carefully. So Matthew chapter 18, verse 21. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, the, asked Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began, to settle, as he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered, uh, the master actually ordered him, and his wife and his children, all that they had, you know, they had to pay back all that they had owed. Right? So they had to pay back the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged. And I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when the servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servants fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said, I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me. Shouldn't you have had mercy on a fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailer's to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. And listen to this. Verse 35 is the most important. Now, this is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is very important for us to hear this morning. If you want to walk in freedom, if you want to walk in liberty, 
you need to understand as we hear in this passage of scripture we see the master forgiving the king forgiving the debt of his fellow servant but he did not go and do likewise sometimes we forgive people but we still have we still have some something left we still have leftovers right when you eat you eat as much as you can right and when you can't eat and if still there is food what do you do what do you do what do you come on i'm i'm really testing you now <laughs> what are you going to do to the food i want to see what your answer is ah how many of you throw away oh this is excess straight in the bin or some of you you will store it in the refrigerator and that will be that will be there you will keep keep cooking new food and you know that's just going to be in the refrigerator and one day you just take it out ah oh, you know what this is useless and you throw it away right but can we do that with people can we do that with you know relationships can we do that but relationships do turn sour they do turn bitter and that's because we still have that bitterness that has grown because of unforgiveness and you see what the bible says i'll read that again because i want you to understand this is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from where not just verbally just saying something you know you know what for the sake of saying it you know if he is convinced or if she is convinced then that's up to her no it has to come from your heart not just from your mouth because when it comes from your heart you will very well know that it's coming from your heart and when it's coming from your mouth you will also know that it's still hidden and it's not yet resolved you know that's why it grows into bitterness that's why it grows into anger and that's how it goes into rage and you wonder why do you have this aggression why do you have this outburst of emotion because you've left something undealt with and that is triggering your emotion and your behavior not in a place where you want it it's bursting in a place that you don't want it but there is a root which needs to be dealt with how many of you are with me so far you know when peter asked jesus the question how many times we should forgive jesus already knew what was troubling peter right and we all understand the root cause of all unforgiveness is sin sin is the root cause of all unforgiveness and today if you want a future in christ i want you to understand something the future your desire is based on how healthy your heart and your mind is do you know that you know unforgiveness causes disrupt- disruption and disturbance in your body maybe you know it but you may not know to the extent that it can go i will share with you and today this morning i'm not here to freak you out but this morning i'm here to encourage you because remember this year it is for you to move forward this year it is for you to let go of the things that has bothered you that has bottled you and kept you back but this is a year this is a season where you need to go ahead and take charge and move forward and this is a call to obedience where your forgiveness is going to pave the way to some of the things that you've prayed for but haven't received but once you forgive from the heart you will start see things realigning and falling into pleasant places amen how many of you want things falling in pleasant places you want things falling in pleasant places then there is something that you need to get rid of you need to get rid of unforgiveness because it's very clear god is not very happy with us if we are going to harbor hurt and pain and especially as believers this year is not the year for you to start crouching and holding on to things that people have said 
become very itchy touchy and pitchy you know what i mean oh you said this to me come on break out of it snap out of it small things you get offended so quickly and then you have like oh i can't believe that person said that to me i want you to learn something from celebrities okay like even even from the world do you know you look at celebrities they're so popular but do you think everybody likes them no if you look at the hate comments you're like oh wow that's crazy but do you think they're sitting on it and saying okay this person said this to me and they stop living their lives have they stop living their lives they're just moving in the direction that they're moving but for us as believers sometimes we're like oh i can't believe come on am i am i speaking to somebody this morning you know am i am i you know i don't mean to be i don't mean to be rude to offend you but this is the truth that i cannot you know i cannot sugar coat it it is what it is and i want you to take it in the right sense of the right spirit so that you will know what is holding you back because i pray that there would be a sense of boldness that comes upon you that you will act in accordance of what the word of god says amen so it is time to forgive now if, even as i'm sharing this with you i want you to think about you know i want you to introspect and think about is there anybody in my life that i've still haven't forgiven you may have forgotten but not forgiven is a it's a complete different thing and it could go way back right up until your childhood days whatever happened in your home whatever happened in your small little friend circle whatever happened in school but this is time for you to forgive so that the weight is lifted off you are you with me this morning it can go really far back out and if you don't remember don't worry about it just pray ask god to reveal it to you because that's what is blocking and hindering the blessing that god has already ordained for you we're not able to walk in that freedom because we're still harboring hurt we're not able to walk in that freedom because we're still we're still hind- being hindered by the offense we're still lingering around way too long some of us 20 years 30 years 40 years we're still stuck why because we can't let go but i want you to know today if you want to move forward you have to let go and you have to allow the holy spirit to help you with it you know my wife gave me a good quote and uh, i i was just kind of sharing you know about forgiveness and she said forgiving is for giving forgiveness is not withholding forgiving is for giving forgiveness is not withholding so this morning what holds you back what is holding you what keeps you from moving forward what is it is it someone or is it a few or is it a, is it many because bitterness grows it not only grows it rots our flesh do you know how dangerous that is bitterness not only kind of multiplies it kind of grows and it rots our flesh and this morning i want to give you a few key points of what we all need to understand so the important aspect of forgiveness is we're not free if we still have unforgiveness for anyone forgiveness is crucial for us to walk in freedom in this new season god expects us to forgive others in order for us to receive his forgiveness for our sins forgiveness is not about debating but settling by keeping short accounts and you cannot worship truly if there is no forgiveness we give the enemy a foothold in our lives if we don't forgive you open the door right we spoke about doors this is how you open doors when we forgive we imitate 
Christ. When we forgive, we break the power of sin that holds us back. When we forgive, we receive healing and comfort from God. When we forgive, we break the cycle of bitterness and experience true freedom. When we forgive, we open our heart to God to heal us from our trauma that is trapped in our body. When we forgive, we understand the power of God's love. When we forgive, the weight of expectations from others don't limit us from living an abundant life. Can you see the power of forgiveness? And you would wonder, you know, as believers, we talk about forgiveness, and this is not a strange topic for us. We've heard sermons after sermons, as, as I said earlier this morning. Do you know, even corporations, big, big companies, you know, part of their vision, mission, and values, they have forgiveness as a very integral and important part of how their culture evolves. And if they're taking, if the world is taking forgiveness seriously because they know the principle of forgiveness, how much more should we operate in forgiveness? How much more should we value the power of forgiveness that can set us free from the slavery of sin? Because this is, this is what is stopping us from being set apart. The children of God are not being revealed because they're still harboring in hurt and hate and bitterness. No wonder we have depression, we have anxiety, we have all these things. Because there is unforgiveness that is still lurking in our boundaries. Are you with, this, with me this morning? You know, I want you to know the enemy knows very well how to feed into our thoughts and inflate our ego. That's why it becomes hard to forgive certain people. You know, when we struggle to forgive people, especially those who have wronged us, and when you see them living lives unhindered, that bothers us even more. How can she, you know, like she's pretending like nothing ever happened. He's walking around freely like nothing ever happened. And you're more worried about it. It's time to release. Let go. Leave it to God. Because he is a, he is Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And he is also the righteous judge. You know what righteous judge does? If there are people misrepresenting you, if people are accusing you falsely, and if you're offended, I want you to know, just give it up to just give it up to Jesus. But you know what? You know what he's going to do? He's going to take that offense and turn it into something beautiful. And he's going to use that same offense and show the ones that offended you. You are the apple of his eye. You are my child. Remember when you are being offended, it's not just you who's being offended. You're also offending the one whose image that you're being created in. Do you know how big that is? Do you know Jesus was offended so many times? And did he retaliate? Did he show his aggression? Him being Lord stayed quiet. Because he chose, because he knew who he was and what he was about. Because he was the blessed sacrifice, the forgiveness of sin for all mankind. You, you are an ambassador in the flesh who represents Christ in you. So be quick in forgiving. Because the quicker you forgive, the faster you move forward. You clear the pathway when you forgive. The narrow road becomes clear. How many of you are willing to walk in forgiveness? How many of you are thinking about something that you need to go and set yourself right with and say, you know what, I need to call this person. You know, I need to message this person. I need to get online with my dad, with my mom, or with my brother, with my siblings, whoever it is, and say, you know what, I've held on this hurt for too long. But at this point, it doesn't matter who's right, who's wrong, but I just choose to forgive. Because I know I'm liberated in the freedom that Christ has promised me because of the forgiveness of the sins that he's offered on the cross. There is no time for us right now to be living in offended lives. 
No more offended lifestyle. This is a time for us to walk in freedom and in authority that God has placed on us. Church, this is such an integral part of us being an effective believer. How many of you like stories? You like stories? I love stories. I want to share with you a story. This is a true story, by the way. We're talking about forgiveness, right? There was a man by the name of Anthony Ray Hinton. Now, Anthony Ray Hinton was being accused falsely of two murders that happened in Jefferson County. And so what happened when he was accused of the two murders that he never committed, there was a lot of things that happened in terms of, you know, um, the verification of uh, the legal part of things that kind of unfolded. He was not only falsely accused, he was also falsely misrepresented because he didn't have, you know, the backing of the, you know, uh, you know the, law, uh, the lawyers that he could probably pay and get somebody to kind of vouch for him. And even though there were not true evidences and facts, the fact that he was accused, he was put into prison for a murder and a crime that he did not commit. And do you know how long he was been put into prison? 29 years. All his colleagues, he was actually at a warehouse where they were locked in till 6 a.m. in the morning. And the murders that happened was in between that time. And even the car that, you know, the armed robbers used was nowhere in the description of what Jefferson, I mean, like uh, Anthony Ray Hinton was driving. Still, you know, he was being put, accused falsely and put in prison. But you know what Anthony Hinton did? He maintained his innocence. Imagine maintaining your innocence for 29 years. And you know what? As all these trials went, think about the rejection. Think about the, the anger, the sense of bitterness and the frustration Anthony might have had. Can you just imagine being thrown into prison for nothing, for no crime you commit, committed for 29 years? And you being falsely accused and you have to go and stand trial every time in front of the court and people just asking you questions after questions. And you have to live, live those things and just kind of like stand and say the things that you did not do. And it so happened. After many years, almost 29 years later, his case was reappealed. And there was a nonprofit that helped him out in, in finding a, a lawyer that can actually represent him. And things went. And when they went back into the investigation and found out, uh, back then, even one of the reasons why he was being thrown into prison was because when they were trying to validate, they found out, they, they did a search in his mother's house and found out an old .38 revolver. And that gun was ancient, World War II. And nobody could validate the guns, you know, the bullets were from that gun, but he still was sent to prison. And eventually, when he was proved innocent, when he walked out, all those lawyers that accused him, when they knew that he was innocent, still didn't bother. Imagine how, how he must spend. I just spent 29 years inside a prison cell for not committing a crime. And you don't even have a sense of acknowledgement for my innocence. But you know what Anthony did? He said, I've lost many years of my life. But I want to live the rest of my life. And he chose to forgive. And he walked in freedom. Today, Anthony is one of the most renowned speakers across and he speaks and he fights for justice where there's been injustice. Can you imagine the power of forgiveness today is changing lives? We know that. Jesus himself demonstrated that on the cross. If you and I are walking in freedom, if you and I are enjoying this benefit, it's because there was a blessed sacrifice. No more time to be offended and walking in offense. This is the time for you to walk in freedom.
it's time to forgive. Because remember, you're stepping into a new season. In the new season, you have new promises. New, new things that you're going to see happen in your life. So you can't keep dabbling with the past. You can't keep dabbling with what's, what's gone by and what's, you know, uh, what's, what's of the past. You need to see things in a new light. Behold, I make all things new. So you need to behold that. You know, when, when we talk about forgiveness and human relationships, it is not a fact that relationships lead to great joy and great pain, right? It is a fact, right, that it leads relationships to great joy and great pain. Forgiveness is the key to continued joy and the reduction of pain. According to recent medical research, forgiveness has a number of medical impacts on a person offering forgiveness. This is a world science kind of like representing. Lower risk of heart attack, reduction in blood pressure, reduction in anxiety, stress and depression levels, reduction in overall pain. Do you know how many people struggle in their body with diseases and ailments. Why? There are believers who are struggling in your, in your life because you've opened the door to the enemy to enter into your lives because of unforgiveness. Now, I'm not, gonna, I'm not here to glorify unforgiveness, but I'm here to nail it down so that you can experience and encounter the power of forgiveness that you and I have I have access to. Don't let it run stale. Use it. You have it with you. You know, there are a few stages that we have to walk in order to experience that, the power of forgiveness. Number one, you want to write this down. Number one, we need to come to a place of surrender. Number one. Number two, you know, if you don't surrender, you cannot forgive because you still got things held on. From surrender, you move to forgiveness. And when you move to forgiveness, you also have to give room for repentance. Repentance is important. And when you repent, you also got to renounce. See, this is something that we don't do. The sins and, and the kind of issues that we have, we need to renounce it. If you struggle with any area of sin, you need to renounce it. If you've struggled with pornography, you need to renounce it. If you've struggled with any form of addiction, if you've struggled with any form of, you know, hate or bitterness or shame or guilt, renounce it in Jesus' name. Let it out of your system. Because that's what is just, you know, holding us back. And the last thing is to walk in freedom. And it is this not, it's not a short walk. It's a continuous walk that we continue to keep walking in that freedom. Amen? You know, Vody Buckham is one of, uh, one of the most uh, renowned speakers um, that you get to hear around today. And he said something. He said, forgiveness does not mean one forgets um, as in has the ability to remember no more the offense, but in spite of the memory, one erases the debt. Just because you forgive, it doesn't mean to say that you will forget about what that person has done. But you choose, remember? You choose to erase that debt. You know, as a king, he chose to erase that debt for his servant. Right? And we see Anthony Ray Hinton, he made a choice. He chose to forgive. So you need to make a choice today. If you want to walk in that victory and that liberation of that freedom that God has bestowed unto you, it is time for you to make a choice. So in this new season, are you willing to make a choice? And in this season, you need to understand the times. The Bible says, you know, the psalm says, Teach us to number our days, O oh God. Do you know 
are you in that awareness of that spiritual zone that you're in? Or are we just, just living life? I'm going to read another passage of scripture and I'm going to come to a closure. And this is from, uh, can we turn our Bibles to... Um, Okay, this is from Genesis. Genesis chapter 8. You know, today is the 7th of January, right? 7th, you know, numbers are very, very, uh, you know, very, very, uh, it has an important, significant place. 7 also means completion. And so that means to say that this is a very important stage of where we are. In this new year, today being Sunday the 7th, I'm really excited when... When Pastor Jobin gave me the date, I was all excited. I said, okay, that's a good day. That's a good head start to have for this new year. So the number seven and the numbers play a very important role. So you will get to see this. Um, Genesis chapter eight, we see, but God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and the livestock that were with him in the ark. And he sent a wind over the earth and the waters receded. Now the springs of the deep and the floodgates of the heaven had been closed and the rain had stopped falling from the sky. The water receded steadily from the earth and the end of the 150 days, the water had gone down. And on the 17th day of the seventh month, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. The waters continued to recede until the 10th month. And on the first day of the 10th month, the tops of the mountain became visible. After 40 days, Noah opened a window he had made in the ark. And he sent out a raven and it kept flying back and forth until the waters had dried up from the earth. Then he sent out a dove to see if the, if the water had received receded from the surface of the ground but the dove could not find nowhere to perch because there was water all over yeah water over all the surface of the earth so it returned to noah in the ark he reached out his hand and took the dove and brought it back into himself in the ark he waited seven more days see the seven more days he waited seven more days and again, he sent out the dove from the ark. When the dove returned to him in the evening, there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. Then no one knew that the water had receded from the earth. He waited seven more days and sent the dove out again. But this time, it did not return to him. By the first day of the first month of Noah's 601st year, the water had dried up from the earth. Noah then removed the covering from the ark and saw that the surface of the ground was dry. By the 27th day of the second month, the earth was completely dry. Then God said to Noah, Come out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and their wives. Bring out every kind of living creature that is with you, the birds, the animals, and all the creatures that move along the ground. So, the, so they multiply on earth and be fruitful and increase in number on it. So Noah came out together with his sons and his wife and his son's wives. All the animals and all the creatures that move along the ground and all the birds, everything that moves on the land came out of the ark one kind after another. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and taking some of all the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offering on it. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, never again will I curse the ground because of humans. Even though every inclination of the human heart is evil from childhood and never again I will destroy all living creatures as I have done. As long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. Amen. You know the last 
part noah built an altar it is time to build an altar it is time to build an altar of forgiveness so that your life can be altered because your dreams can be set apart like no other and you will see the sun and you will walk in righteousness and he will pave the way for you amen can you see god wants to do signs and wonders just like noah he waited patiently he saw that he understood the signs take note my friend my brother my sister take note of the signs that are around you and let not your heart be troubled there may be earthquake famines and flood but if you are a child of god and if you're walking in that forgiveness and if you're walking in that truth you are the son and righteousness of god and when you are the son and righteousness of god there is his hand over you there is his protection over you and you will be like a seed planted by the river and you will multiply and i pray that this year you will grow in wisdom you will grow in stature you will grow in the level of your anointing i pray that each one of you will get a hold of god's anointing over your life because when you have that anointing over your life you will see mighty things happen you will see miracles signs and wonders flow and you will be the witness in the most oddest of places and god will use you i pray that god will use you as esther i pray that god will use you as jacob as joseph as daniel as hannah may the god of peace rule your heart this new year let nothing be a mess let his presence be in your life let him be the author and finisher of your faith 